just wait a minute, see if a couple more people show up. All right, we got to 60 from what I see here. Brave souls. Shall we begin? Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the closing session for Tadwig 2021. Uh, we made it to Friday. And we have news to share and, and some highlights, and we can't wait to get started so we can all get to the dancing part. Um, here we've been through a week and we're now down in this part uh, of the session, and we're ready to find out a bit more about what happened. So it was very exciting to see uh, here that we got a chance to use a, a new platform, and that in itself was exciting and to see um, what everybody likes about it. We'd like to hear from you. Uh, certainly this costs more for Tadwig to do, uh, but on the other hand, the expenses also mean that those of us who are coming to the meeting and we're hoping to plan it can actually pay more attention to the content of the meeting when we're not dealing with the nuts and bolts of registration and uh, managing all the technical things that uh, Avery and her staff uh, have taken care of for us the, the entire week. Um, so we now also have six months of access to this content. So if you registered uh, for Tadwig, you can now log on to this platform for the next six months. You can continue conversations, you can revisit uh, sessions. You can look at sessions you didn't have the chance to go to because, as some of us noted, um, when it's remote, we have to weave our daily lives into our conference lives, and it's very tricky. So um, this, of course, is COVID, which may be with us for a while. So we see this shift of virtual meetings or hybrid meetings. And having this support has made a big difference uh, for all of us in the way the conference is run this week. A little bit of uh, stats, there'll be more for you to get you, give you some idea of participation inside the platform. And as you can see, a post-conference survey is um, coming your way very soon because we need your, your feedback on these. And again, questions, please put them in. If you're joining via Whova, you can put them in the Whova Q&A. Um, if you're joining via Zoom, you can put them in the, in the chat. Posters Plus. Um, how many people here came to the posters session? Can you put a plus one in the chat, wherever you are? Whova, where's the Whova? Cool, I can see the count going up, right? So again, this was something new for us, right? So a poster session normally is a one-on-one -on -one type affair where you walk up to a poster, the author might be standing there, there might be other people in line. Um, we had about, was it 80 people show up? Something like that, 60 to 80 people. Um, and we got to see some of the presenters and, and talk with them and have them share their work uh, during the Posters Plus session, but we've been visiting them all week. Uh, and again, they're there for you to visit um, for six months. We were excited to see um, so many people turn out for it and express appreciation for things like being able to share videos uh, and to actually meet the authors in a long-term way. Again, through the platform, I think many of you uh, appreciated the opportunity uh, in the community, you could really see people presenting topics and starting conversations. And many of you took advantage of the ping that went out from the software to say, hey, please 
put some topics in here that are of interest to you and you see how that started conversations. So again, trying to provide those opportunities in a virtual space. Um, and also for those of you who got a chance to look at the photos, you might've got us some hints about some other things that happened during the week as well. Is there anything anybody wants to add about the, um, from the program or steering committee about the parts I might've not mentioned? In Deb, slide? Yes. Deb, if, if I may, uh, one thing I think we should clarify with uh, everybody since we're talking about six months, is yeah. that uh, we will extract uh, at the end of that six months or before it, we will extract uh, what has been said and done in that space and we'll find a home for it in the open so everybody can still benefit from it. Yes, great, James. Thank you for jumping in. Yes, love it. Um, yeah, so just to reassure everyone, uh, the content and, doesn't go away. Yes, Gail. And we will uh, be connecting the uh, talks uh, to the YouTube, uh, the Tedwig YouTube, as well as slide decks uh, to abstracts. Yep, great, but thank you. Not immediately after the, um, the conference. Yeah. So again, the, the goal here is to add value to the people who um, presented, et cetera, and then eventually make the content open. Um, thank you for jumping in. Um, Thank you, Vijay. Are you here? Yes. So, would you like to say a few words? Yes, yes, definitely. Um, BioBlitz, I think, was a really good success. We uh, received um, observations from a lot of places. So many interesting observations. I don't know. Maybe uh, due to the session on um, fungus in this uh, conference. We have unusually high number of uh, fungus submissions, different uh -huh. kinds of very interesting mushrooms. So uh, uh, it's really nice. Uh, I'm, I'm sure uh, Rob Stevenson and <laughs> group is going to be happy about it. Lot many um, uh, fungus submissions. We already have uh, 1,200 uh, observations and about 670 species. And a lot of people are uh, have taken a challenge to uh, take the species number to about 1,000 using the uh, coming weekend because we have the BioBlitz open uh, throughout uh, coming weekend because we know that with 13 hours of uh, conference talks, no one really had a lot of time to go out uh, depending on your time zone. So uh, please use the, the next weekend and keep posting on um, on the project and let's Let's see if we can hit thousand species. Yeah, the next one. Yep. And maybe somebody could put the link in the chat or if they didn't already, I'm guessing. For yes. the people Most that are, the here, people so. are already there, but I will put the link, yes. Yeah, thank you. And just to give you all a taste of what you might see if you go there, um, BJ? Mm -hmm. Yes, so uh, I think the, the user who has posted most observation is, if I'm not wrong, a new user like registered for, in our natural list for this uh, conference bioblitz itself and already has 160 records and 120 species in last week which is uh, really amazing and uh, yeah uh, th these are the kind of leaderboards and these are some of the interesting records that i came across i'm sure there there are many more and in the in the bioblitz um, discussion uh, channel please share if you find anything uh, any uh, record really interesting, please share the URL so all, all of us can see it because it's re really difficult to go through all 1200 records and look for interesting things, but that will be a nice one. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for taking on organizing that. Appreciate that. So quickly, we have uh, some slides to show you that will be available afterwards and plenty of time for questions. Uh, but we just wanted to give you some bits of information because so much happens between the conferences uh, that Tadwig has that it, it's really hard to convey all the work going on and we didn't want it to be invisible. Um, so with help from the synthesis uh, project and their funding, there's work going on um, from like Martin Treckles uh, at Mesa Botanic Garden, um, working with the collection descriptions task group, and using GitHub and Wikidata, um, 
and the work that Quentin has done to encourage work on the uh, mid standards and how did it die and the people in biodiversity data task groups. And Tina Liu at Naturalis helps us with the organization of, of Tadwig Europe and uh, supporting Gail with our um, editing of the conference abstracts. One of the activities we participated in, um, we, not me, or is anybody here from that would like to talk about that? Pat, you want to say? Yeah, um, yeah. I thought you know, have some words here, but. I don't know, but your sound's not working. Oh, your sound is garbled. Dear, I try again. Remember. Try again. Oh. Yeah, does so, it come to? Okay. There you go. You know? Okay. Yeah, we organized uh, in the framework of uh, Bicycle a hackathon in Meisen, where they had five or six different uh, issues that they determined to uh, try to, to solve some workflow on uh, data knowledge and uh, libraries. So Quentin had a, a presentation during the sessions where he detailed all the, the different use cases, and uh, it was a great success and uh, one of the first meeting where we saw each other again face to face and we had really a good time and we had also many people following remotely so uh, we gained also some experience in organizing a hybrid meeting of that scale and uh, yeah if you have more questions you can always refer to the presentation of Quentin or come back also to Sophie Meuse and and us to to get more details on the on the outcomes that will also be published uh, in the bicycle project. Thanks. So um, in the notes I have here to point out, because I think, uh, could everybody who was at that just say hi in the chat too? If you were at this hackathon, if you were there for this, because that way people can say hi directly now. Um, Tim Robertson and Nikki Nicholson were working on enhancing the GBIF clustering to give you an idea at Fair Digital Objects and Design for Data from multiple sources. Wouter was working on that group. And um, Visitary Ung worked on the hidden women in science. Um, so our participation in, in Bicycle. And for those of you who didn't go to the Bicycle session, just briefly, um, they are working on, and we are a uh, partnership with them, to link together um, different services and data, uh, specimen data, genetic sequences, species information, analytics possibilities with all that data, publications uh, all toward building a biodiversity knowledge graph and reuse. And there's tons more about that in the Bicycle Symposium if you go back and listen. Gail? Hi, I'm Gail Kampmeyer. I'm editor in chief of whoops. My fault. My bad. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Tensoft journal, Biodiversity Information Science and Standards, aka BIS. Um, Ellie Wallace is uh, managing editor and my co-conspirator. And the journal began began publication in 2017. Uh, so it turns five years old this year. Uh, I think you can agree that the, the abstracts that we publish for the conference are not your typical conference abstracts. And we tried to point this out uh, in a Pensoft blog in July that was timed to encourage submissions and recognize the value of all of these abstracts to uh, Tadwig 2021. Um, I'll put the link in the chat for the blog. Um, and it highlighted how these abstracts can be linked to talks uh, posted on Tadwig's YouTube channel after the conference, and the slides can be added to the media uh, tab in BIS. People can also comment on things there. Uh, these are a great benefit for discovery uh, for members and other participants, and it's also great for altmetrics. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for contributing to the success of this year's uh, Tadwig Proceedings 2021, including all of the technical editors, which included all of the session organizers and the members of the program committee, the folks at Pensoft, including Boriana Ovchorovna and Teodor Georgiev. And uh, give special thanks to my co-volume editors, Ellie Wallace and Tina Liu. 
We published 123 abstracts before this conference, representing 350 pages of printed content. And uh, we hoped to get several post-conference abstracts or articles uh, from the results of panel discussions, workshops, and the unconference. Um, and they will be included in this volume. So uh, this is often considered a place just to publish abstracts. Uh, I would really encourage you to think about this for publishing not just these abstracts, but full-fledged articles on the development of standards or application of new methods and approaches to biodiversity informatics. Um, I'll post a link uh, of where you can find uh, all the different kinds of, of articles that people can publish. And Tadwig members get a discount on article processing charges. So please think about this when you are going to be publishing about biodiversity informatics. Thank you. Thanks, Gail. Holly, are you still with us? I am for now. Let's give it a <laughs> shot. OK. Um, so I'm Holly Little. I'm the current North America Regional Representative for Tadwick. Um, and I wanted to share a bit about the working meetings coming up in November that we hope you'll join us for. These are meetings of the interest and task groups, workshops, and functional subcommittee meetings. Uh, they will be the Wednesdays and Thursdays in November. Registration is now open through Eventbrite. You can see the link here. Uh, and further details, including session descriptions, are available at, on the Tadwig website. These are sessions that are open to all. So please join us, even if you haven't participated in one of these groups before. This is a great time to get started. Uh, as always, do, we did our best to accommodate time zones. We have encouraged conveners to use uh, tools for asynchronous participation where possible, like shared notes. And a few sessions will be repeated to increase opportunities for engagement. Next slide, please. Quick review. Yes. Um, so before entering into the November sessions, you might be curious about the interest groups and task groups, which Tadwick has many. These are more information can be found on the community page on the website. These are the groups that the development and maintenance of our community driven standards are accomplished through, and they have quite a wide coverage of topics and areas of focus. Next slide, please. And of course, to ensure the successful implementation of these standards, it's important to have a wide range of perspectives and expertise. So we hope that you will join us in November and moving forward in our Tadwood community. Next, please. To give you a taste of some of what has happened in 2021, we have one new interest group and four new task groups that you can see here. Next, please. And we had two task groups that completed their work this year, the Darnford Chronometric Age Extension and the GBWG group. Yay, very exciting. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> Always nice to finish something. Mm -hmm. um, also this year, we had a number of updates and ratifications to our standards at Tadwig. Um, including that chronometric age extension with new terms, uh, Darwin Core Review, which I'll talk about more in a second, Audubon Core updates, the extension for geosciences for the ABCD standard, and the GGBN standard. Thanks. Thanks. And oh, for the, that Darwin Core Review. There were 44 proposals and comments in the GitHub threads, a really wonderful example of the community effort that we see in Tadwick and engagement in the growth of a standard that. OK, I'll take it from there. Holly said she has several routes. Oops. All utilize quite regularly, I think, hospitals and the others. Yeah, Holly, you're dropping now. So, um, 
Okay, so I'll make the point for Holly that she got um, most of out there. This is her last slide, so that was well time drop. Um, if you're so inclined, visit the GitHub site uh, where these conversations were happening. It's quite amazing on some of them uh, to see the, the community input and conversations going on to help us get where, where we need to go with these standards. Um, and thank you everybody here to participate. Thanks, Holly. Uh, next, we have some interest and task group highlights. At the end of the year, they produce a report. So these are just meant to be quick milestones to share with all of you who might be new. Um, it's a lot of slides. We're not here to cover every single point on every single one. It's more of uh, a quick tour through them. But I encourage anybody here, and I had asked the, the executive and the uh, um, the program and steering committees. If you if you have a comment you want to make or something, you know, speak up and put a question in Hoover or the for the next slides. So the collection descriptions interest group I hear tell is is getting close to being done. Um, so for those of you who are familiar with this, uh, but it, and those of you who are not, it, this will hopefully support richer data around what we have in collections. Um, more richer better data so we can do, uh, for example, better metrics, understanding how much we have and how far we have to go uh, to mobilize collections data. You've heard just a bit about the Darwin Core Maintenance Group from, the, from Holly and um, earlier in the sessions. Let's see, I think you're here, Paula. Would you like to say anything about the Darwin Core Maintenance Group? I think I'm not the only one from that group in this room. I wasn't sure. <laughs> I can't see all of that going on. So, yes, there are, there are several of us here. It, it has been quite a lot of work from the group this year because it had some accumulated uh, work that needed to be done. But it was quite a success. There was a lot of participation. And then there were a couple of webinars attached to that to try to explain what happened to people. And I think that was super important. And well, as you said, I encourage everyone to go to the GitHub and see each, each change and how, how the discussions went, went about. I think it was huge. This year was huge for our Thank you. And I, what I'd say is if you are from that group, would you type in the chat now? Say hi. Hi from the Darwin Core Maintenance Group. So others who don't know who you are or which group you're a part of can um, put that together right now. Thank you. Thanks, Paula. Material sample task group. Teresa, are you here? She, here she I is. actually am. Cool. Please say a few words if you may. If you um, might. Well, so we're a very new task group. We've only met, I think, three times now. And I apologize, there's a lot of construction noise going on by me. Um, but we are looking at the terms that belong with material sample and thinking about how um, the definition of material sample and some of the other um, classes that are related to it, like um, preserved specimen and living specimen all fit together um, and hopefully going to come out with some better definitions and maybe even a better process for museums to publish their um, catalog records um, instead of trying to just mash them into the occurrence model. Thank you. Appreciate you jumping in. Sure. Uh, Audubon Core Maintenance Group. Steve, are you here by any chance? Yes, I am here. Please. Yeah, so we had a very active first half of the year um, with a, no a number of calls mostly focused on figuring out what to do about defining regions of interest within media items. And so we maintained our focus and finished that, which we felt happy about. Um, the other thing that we worked on, and um, we have one completed uh, user guide for still images, and um, we have one that's sort of in preparation for sounds. So this was something that people asked for, and, uh, and we, ha we have those either done or in preparation. So uh, a busy year for us. 
thanks. And thank you for all that work. Next up, the views controlled vocabulary. So that's me too. Yep. <laughs> we, we also met um, quite a bit in the first half of the year. Um, we had been assembling use cases and trying to determine what the final requirements would be for this, uh, these controlled vocabularies. So we have basically a draft vocabulary. This is to describe subject part and subject orientation. And our next step is uh, to subject the candidate uh, terms that we have to user testing. So if you work with um, images, we would love to have you be a, a tester for us. Thanks very much. Next, the biodiversity data quality interest group. Anybody here would like to talk about that? Who's from yes, leadership? I can. <clears throat> I can do that, uh, yeah, Deb. Thanks, Arthur. Arthur Chapman here. Um, yeah, the, the, we have four task groups and, and they'll pop up of, uh, in the next slides as well. Uh, COVID-19 has caused us quite a bit of problem this year uh, in the last 12 months. Um, uh, one of our task group leaders contacted COVID and has uh, not been very well because of that. Uh, we've got two task groups that we're hoping to fi finish up this coming year. Um, it's just uh, need to put a report in. Uh, the main task group uh, that we're working on, which will come up in a minute, is the um, uh, tests and assertions. A lot of work's been done on that. Um, we're hoping to, uh, I'll just run through these. And the framework on data quality is one we want to finish up this year. Uh, and develop a new task group to imp for implementation and Alan Cockfig is the one that uh, contacted um, uh, COVID this year. Uh, the next one, the data quality tests and assertions being run by Lee Belbin. Uh, we've finalized 99 core tests and documented them against the standard template. Uh, we're working on a test database so that we can test all the tests against that database. So if anybody's implementing it, they've got a set of uh, tests that they can run against it on their own system to see if it works the way it's meant to. Uh, this has uh, been not an easy uh, task where we're trying to um, make a test for, or have examples for everything that should fail in a test. Um, there's four of us mainly working on that, Lee Belbin, myself, John Majoric and Paul Morris. And uh, it's been hard to do some of this work without doing face-to-face -face meetings, but um, we're getting well underway and uh, Lee's working on it at the moment. And I think we should make some major progress in this coming six months. Next one. Uh, the second, uh, Arthur, this slide is from 2016. I want to point it out to people. So this was your slide, Arthur. Why do we still have uh, databases that allow these things? And so yes. hoping your work is going to make a big difference in people's ability to implement things that help uh, make that better. Indeed. Sorry, that's a slight um, digression. The yeah, task group three, we, we hope to finish up as well. Um, it's, it's completed. It's just... Um, awaiting me putting a, a request into the executive to close that one up. And I'll let Paula talk about the task group four. Well, thanks, Arthur. In truth, task group four has not done very much progress, really. And I am to blame. I'm the convener of that task group. So right now, uh, best practices document is about to come out as a draft for review in the task group and brother. I expect that they will, will, will be out in November. And in the meantime, during the year, we have been working with other, with other people, like for instance, with the GWF informatics team in the vocabularies that they are building. And we have done some vocabularies uh, workshops, one with the ornithologist community. Um, mainly with people from the US, but with representation of people from all over, just building vocabularies of values. 
So we got some insights from that community to incorporate to the draft document process. And also joined with Steve Boskov, we just run a, a workshop in Tadwick 2021 for translating uh, vocabulary. I think you're going to mention that later, Deb. I think so. so. I'll skip it. I think I'm going to get, well, I was going to get you to speak, you both to talk about it if you're here. Yes. Okay. We're both here. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Thanks. Um, thank you. How did it die? Quentin, are you up late? Wasn't sure Quentin was going to be able to join us. So uh, in this task group, uh, Sophia Ratcliffe, um, are you by any chance here? It would also be very late in the UK. Um, and again, trying to work on uh, terms that help people describe, um, in this case, causes of death more robustly. For those of you who've never seen the, the sort of distinct values that people put in for things like that, it's, it's quite astonishing. Anybody here from this group? I'm not sure. Um, but again, uh, this is an interest group whose goal is to um, help foster discussions around people who are interested in, in um, biological interactions data. And this is the kind of work that they are taking on. And this is a, again, you can study this later, but this gives you some idea of the kind of work they're doing to understand um, the scope of what they need to do and to try to model it so people can share this kind of information. Just a uh, shout out to uh, Jose Salim and Martin Trakels for, um, for the symposium earlier today. Mm -hmm. And also, um, so Jose put these, um, numbers together. And one of the things I took from it is that there's tons of interaction data already hidden all over the place in Garmacore uh, archives. And we are now uh, finding them and putting them together. So that was really the big insight that I got from the, from the meetings that, that were uh, organized uh, through this group. Cool. Yay. Thank you. Ah, the citizen science interest group. Anybody here? I didn't know if Rob or Libby or I'm Peter. Here. Who's, Peter. Who's I? This is Rob Stevenson, sorry. Hi, Rob. Hi. Uh, yeah, we, we met quite often uh, once a week uh, with long discussions and we're, we're making progress towards writing a paper about the uh, about platforms in citizen science and, and the PPSR core. Hmm. And hopefully the workshop in, in uh, November will attract some more uh, people to, to become involved. Please, yeah, that'd be great. I think the, today you had a great participation, did you not? Uh, I was very pleased there were over 60 people. Wow. All right, next slide. Sorry, I'm trying to click in two places. There we go. Uh, the ABCD interest group. Um, this is uh, getting- yeah, David yes. wants to speak yes. up, I think. Oh, good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I can say a few words. So um, uh, yeah, most important thing, we didn't do that much um, uh, as compared to last year's Tedrick. Um, uh, there is, we are still in the process of like, preparing the, the proper ratification process for ABCD uh, 3 and hopefully we have some more to show in the November workshops. Um, we yeah, uh, worked on some, some smaller um, uh, things in terms of like how we, we internally handle um, new submissions, change requests. Um, we used the, the modeling framework that we set up for the ABCD project now also in the <clears throat> context of DISCO for to, to model the OpenDS um, specification. So, and, and this has been, yeah, um, getting some, some traction lately again. Um, and yeah, that, those are the main points. We, we have a working session in November and um, yeah, hopefully um, have a bit more to show that by then. 
Thanks for that. Appreciate it. Uh, the Genomic Biodiversity Interest Group. Uh, again, you can tell what they're interested in. Um, and they are hard at work on getting all, all of this uh, tied up together. So thank you to the conveners of that for their work. Again, the Genomic Biodiversity Interest Group working on environmental samples in eDNA. Uh, here you can see what it is they're trying to do. Gabby Druga is leading that. Marika Belko? Uh, yes, I'm here. Um, Marika, <laughs> not Falco, but yeah. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, the EFG task group. Well, you, um, Deb already told you that the standard was ratified. I oh, know it was Holly who, who, um, who had the, this on her slide, but uh, we are still struggling a bit with the publication of the standard. But I hope we will have this done in the next couple of weeks. And further planning of EFG will be done in the ESP workshop in November. So everybody who's interested in geo and earth science in general, paleo, um, is uh, strongly invited to participate. But there's especially in Europe ongoing development under the geo case, which is a portal for um, geo samples and also paleontological samples a bit in parallel to GBIF. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Taxon Names and Concepts Interest Group. Niels Rich, is anybody here from this group? Uh, yes, I'm here. Aha. Would you like to say anything, a few words? Uh, sure. Um, uh, yeah, so the taxonom uh, uh, Taxon Names and Concepts Interest Group, we established the uh, uh, TCS2 uh, task group. Uh, uh, early this year uh, was uh, uh, yeah, approved by the Patrick executive. Uh, we think this is important, so we uh, have uh, uh, suspended all the activities until uh, the work of the task group uh, has been completed. I think there's another slide. And so the um, uh, yeah, the task of the task of the ECS2 task group is to uh, to, um, uh, uh, to develop a new version of the textual concept schema, which is a uh, uh, textual concept schema is about uh, uh, exchanging information about the definition of taxa. Um, uh, so uh, it's a standard that's already been ratified in. Uh, uh, about 15 years ago, um, it's one of the XML standards like uh, ABCD and uh, SDD. Um, uh, we are trying to um, uh, work only about, uh, we are focusing on the structure rather than on the, um, on the, um, uh, yeah, than on the semantics. Uh, and we uh, will, uh, uh, yeah, take uh, getting it out of the XML and provide uh, improved definition or even new definition if terms didn't have one and use its notes. Uh, we provide controls to get if we need it. And uh, uh, yeah, so we're meeting every month and we, uh, uh, we aim to have it ready uh, for issue by that week next year. Mm. It's exciting. Uh, yeah. yeah, well, I hope it works. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we, do <laughs> <laughs> we do too. We do too. A lot of people excited and, uh, about this work, you know. Yeah. Well, it has been a, yeah, it has been a while that uh, we have been thinking about it. So uh, yeah, hopefully we get it done and yeah. uh, not get yeah. stranded in. Uh, no, uh, hopefully not. Yeah, also the discussions about uh, uh, yeah, tangential things. 
<laughs> hope not. But I know you're making good yeah. progress. And thank you for that, because it's not an easy topic at all. So thanks. So this gives you some idea of their work. Yep. All right. The models that you're working on. Yeah, that's just a model. It's just uh, yeah. it doesn't look good on the slide, but it's on a repository. So I'll go there. All right. Go to the repository, y'all. You heard it from Niels. Thank you, Niels. The plant phenology task group. Jen or Katie, are you here? This is our uh, newest task group, and they're going to take on developing uh, vocabulary that helps uh, vascular plants is the context here. Did I hear a mic turn on? Somebody here? Um, to help do a more standard job of describing uh, the phenological state, for example, of a plant on a herbarium sheet. And their charter just got posted. So if you're into this, go and have a look. Um, Geographic scheme interest group is coming. Um, yeah. That's me. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's me. So um, it's a newly uh, task group established this year. So the aim is to update the terrestrial work geographic scheme for recording plant distributions and extend it to the marine areas. So the current progress are that we are divided into two subgroups, the terrestrial and the marine one. Um, we had several iterations on the terrestrial uh, scheme allowed it already several, several improvements. And for the marine scheme, an agreement is to use the exclusive economic zones up to 380 kilometers off the coast. Um, and a detailed proposal has been presented. Um, next slide, please. I think there's another one. Yeah, so the next step is to consolidate the terrestrial scheme, resuming the work for the marine subgroup and take a decision for the high seas area. And we are having a working session on the 24th of November. Thank you. Cool. All right, what's next? Oh, before we do that, then um, Paula and Steve, would you like to talk about your work now? We just finished the. Um, the uh, sure, I can just uh, about the uh, workshop. Yes, please. Yeah, so um, we were really excited yesterday on the translations workshop. We had around 25 people who showed up at the two different sessions. Uh, we had translators for eight languages, Spanish, French, Russian, Chinese, German, Korean, Dutch, uh, oh, I have Chinese here twice. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, but amazingly, we finished 12 of the um, translations of vocabularies and had incomplete work on 11 more. So I, I haven't uh, finished processing all of the data, but um, I have done some of it. And I just put the link in the chats if you want to um, see what the new work on establishment means looks like. You can play around with that. So uh, if anybody who worked on the uh, translations wants to keep working on them, I'm going to leave the Google Sheets up for at least another month. So if you already have that link and you want to keep working on them, just let me know that you've done some work. And if you're interested in translating and you were not um, part of that group, you can contact me and I'd be happy to um, help you figure out how to contribute. So. I, I think is really exciting and it's, yeah, it's great to be able to look at this and see the terms showing up in uh, all these great different languages. So thank you everyone. I'll put my email in the chat if anybody needs to contact me. So a, a naive question, please. This also Does this also mean that the standard and when people are searching for things like this, they have a higher chance of finding it because we'll now get indexed by Google in different languages? Not at the present moment. So, uh, so what the the result of this is, we're basically making these translation data available to developers. So, if someone is writing an application and they want to be able to make like a pick list or something mm -hmm. that would allow people to choose in their own languages, those data are available. So, I'm not a developer, a web developer, or any other kind of developer. So. This page here is very amateur, but I'm sure some of our smart developers could pull up the JSON that, so we will make the JSON available 
Um, and if you go to that landing page I put in there, there's a link to the file that's done and I'll have the other ones linked there. And so we so, hope to make those available and keep them stable so people can pull those data and then they can build the beautiful things from that. Cool. Thank you very much for you on uh, your work with this, Steve and Paula. Thank you for for getting this to happen. It's it's really fun and cool and like yeah. Makes me wish I could actually participate. But <laughs> all right, let me go back. We are here. There we go. So um, at Tadwig, we have uh, subcommittees and we have very just quick notes to share with you from each of them. So this is what they are. Uh, Marika, are you still here? Still, not sleeping yet. Okay. <laughs> Um, yes, thanks. So I'm the chair of the um, uh, subcommittee outreach and communication for one year now. And we started quite successfully uh, mon uh, monthly subcommittee meetings. Um, and um, the biggest progress in this year was, I think, um, three webinars. So Tedwick started a webinar series, and we already had three in um, 2021. I think this was really great. We also picked up our Tetrix communication strategy and um, we are trying our best with communication uh, like on Facebook, but uh, on Twitter because we are trying to tweet more. So it was more or less a reactivation of the Tetrix Twitter account and quite successfully. And we will meet in November um, for a really great topic, which will be the Tetwick logo. So everybody who is inspired by working on new logos on Tetwick's logo, please join us. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Marika. Um, fundraising and partnerships. As you can see, we are seeking a new chair. Um, Constance Ronaldo, and many of you know who through her BHL work, um, retired and she's still active, uh, but had to step down from this position. Uh, but she helped us and along with other members of the group, we successfully fundraised for this year's conference. Um, results of those efforts also uh, made it possible for 43 students to attend Tadwig, 32 postdocs and 39 um, developing nations. Uh, so that they didn't have to pay uh, for registration. And we are indeed seeking strategic partnerships. So if you have ideas, uh, reach out to us. And of course, we're looking for a chair if you're interested in taking that on. And Tim, I'm not sure he's here and he is um, gave me several notes to share very briefly. Um, essentially, there weren't a lot of changes that needed to be done to maintaining the infrastructure of, of Tadwig. Um, can, so that can I say, make yes, a comment please. on this? Yes, so yes. this is actually kind of a behind the scenes thing, but if you go to the yes. standards page, you'll realize there actually is now a page for every Tadwig standard back to prehistory. So that is one thing that we, um, we put together this year. Cool. Maybe you could put a link in the chat or something that or I can. It's just so, on, if you go to tadwig.org, the standards mm -hmm. uh, link, it's, yeah. uh, I mean, before most, a lot of them were there, but like the old ones from the 1990s weren't there. So I spent a lot of time Googling, trying to <laughs> figure out where they actually were, except for the the one that's, that's still lost. And, and I have a lead on that. So. Uh. You all know that feeling when you're trying to find a file and you know you had it somewhere and you can't remember and some old computer or some, yeah. It's trying to keep that historical knowledge uh, and uh, together is not a small task. Thank you for that. Thank you, Steve. Your genealogy sleuthing comes in handy there, I suspect. Um, we have to also thank uh, Tim Robertson. We have to thank Matt Blissett at GBIF uh, for their help to keep um, our data safe our information um, and we do also store things like for example um, the last five uh, five out of seven darwin core releases are deposited on zenodo so another attempt to keep things um, 
many copies keep stuff safe sort of thing. Um, Pat, would you like to say anything briefly? I think all the information's yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, is my voice OK? Yes. OK. Uh, yes, then for the time and place committee, the goal is really to find venues on the long term. So for 2022, I will not spoil, you will see at the end of this session. For 2023, we are uh, looking into Australia. For 2024, it would be uh, Japan. And we are discussing to do it uh, jointly with uh, spinach. And from 2025 onwards, you can again send uh, expression of interest to, to the time and place mail. And uh, as COVID is a bit uh, getting uh, better, I get uh, contacted again since recently from uh, venues organizers from the, the MICE community on meeting incentive conference and exhibition actors. But uh, of course they have fine venues and a lot to offer and also are looking into hybrid meeting, but it's really important that we also get uh, scientific and technical uh, members of interest uh, to co-organize and to be at the local venue because we cannot only work with a professional conference organizer. We will really need the local expert in biodiversity information to, to take it on. So if you are willing, contact me and uh, the group to, to see uh, from 2025 onwards to, to host future TEDWIC meeting. I'm muted. Uh, for those of you who caught this right away, not sure how many of you might have caught this right away. Yes, TARDIS at TEDWIC.org. Uh, the time and relative dimension in space. Yes. <laughs> and it looked a bit like the name. And so mm -hmm. We choose this email just yes. for fun. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, the technical architecture group, Nikki or James, are you here? I'm here. I think Nikki's lurking too. Um, one thing I learned when I looked back at, uh, at the tag is that we actually aren't chairs, we're conveners. So mm. co-conveners, Nikki and I. Uh, okay. I think what we can say for this year, we, we had some hopes and aspirations and didn't quite make it to some of them, but what we did do was we listened and we watched. Uh, and there's so much activity going on right now, so many standards in flight, so many uh, interest groups and task groups active. And the role of the tag sort of to look across that space and, and look for synergies, look for overlap and sort of pay some, uh, oh, I like the orchestra thing, okay, thanks. Um, so we're continuing that uh, and trying to think, and what we see is sort of a, a clear need for documentation that surrounds sort of how is someone new coming into the process? Where, how do I enter? Do I enter at the beginning? Maybe I can enter in the middle, depending on what I've already done or have in hand. So we're looking at some ways to express that and, and to make it easier for people to understand. And so we'd really like to see a, a wealth of people attend our sessions in November so that we can sort of gather information about that, hopefully find some people motivated to help us and think about the vision for the tag sort of in the big picture. So I, I think that's what we can say. Thank you, uh, I appreciate that. Yeah, I stuck the orchestra one in there because when you, when you Nikki and others were explaining to me kind of what the tag is all about, as I learned uh, more, that's the image that comes to my mind, right? This uh, helping us see our way and keeping everybody together, so to speak, um, the orchestration and, and the, the different groups in the orchestra and uh, the African village that, was it Ian Engelbright? That came to mind as well too, that sort of coordinating that, the village. Um, with that, as you can see, if you've never been through that before, that just gives you some overview of all the work that goes on at Tadwig. Uh, during the year and all the different people that are involved in the many different things that they're doing. Um, and with that, we get to the more businessy parts uh, of the meeting. And I think they're, we're, we're well over halfway through, we're like three quarter way through this. So did somebody wanna say something? I thought I heard a comment. Nope. All right, so William, I think you're up next. Sure. 
we're, we're going to the fun part of the meeting. It's going to be great. Like, um, let's talk a little about Cadwick 21 demo, 2021 demographics this year. As, uh, as Deb mentioned, we got uh, 4019 total re registrants. Uh, that's good, very good. And because of the uh, good um, support from, from uh, colleagues and uh, institutions, we were able to allow uh, the participation of students, uh, postdocs. Um, we also gave uh, complimentary registrations to people who asked. Um, and, and we made that clear in the in the um, in the call. Uh, if you need any help, ask. Um, and gladly, because of the situation, we were able to provide support for those persons. Uh, we got 141 Tadwick members. Uh, we're gonna look at that uh, later. This is uh, two more in, in just a couple of, uh, of days uh, till, till today. Um, we included 39 developing countries uh, defined by the World Bank and a total of 46 different countries. The income currently is estimated in around 33,600. Um, and the credit card companies take a percentage of that and so on. So we're still, um, even when we still need to get the, the final total cost for the conference services and the, and the budget that we're dealing with, the, the uh, picture uh, presented is, is very, very nice, very good. So next one, please. Um, this is a graph of um, the, the people, uh, the, the participants and where they come from, um, from what they said they would come from. And I just wanted to point out that as we had in previous years, we have um, a big majority of people from um, uh, North America and Europe. Uh, interesting enough, this time Europe was, uh, well, there were more Europeans than, than Amer North Americans. Um, and then the rest is divided among Africa, um, Oceania, Asia, and, and Latin America. Uh, but we have um, uh, participants from certain groups increased. Uh, we got, for example, 18 participants from uh, um, Africa and 20 participants from Latin America, which is really, really good to have. Hopefully those numbers will keep going on. Uh, probably because of the, not only the uh, support, but also because of the, um, virtual uh, characteristic of the meeting. Next one. This is a, a, a graph of the uh, income uh, to compare uh, just the membership, how much we get from, from membership. And uh, we got the individual membership and the institutional membership. Um, we got 39 individual registered. Um, uh, uh, we, we also got uh, uh, 39 um, individual registrations and 49 institutional registrations out of this. So as you can see, the, uh, the amount of uh, funds coming from um, institutional registrations is, is, is a lot more, but it keeps growing, which is a, a good sign. We, uh, we went over our estimations. Um, so that's a, a very good uh, situation to have uh, from the beginning that we, we estimated around uh, 300 and, and we got a, more than that. Next one. So um, this was a little uh, complicated, but um, um, still need, still need some uh, input, some data here, because we still need the cost of the conference and the uh, uh, final uh, numbers of uh, registrants and so on. But compared to what we have estimated at the beginning of the year, um, and because of the year and the COVID, we didn't spend that much. Um, we are in, in black. Um, we had uh, uh, estimated um, some, some uh, sorry, we had estimated some of uh, budget from the executive uh, that uh, hasn't happened, but it will happen by the end of the year. So these are some costs that we usually uh, pay, the uh, APC charges, uh, the, um, uh, our, our uh, some of the expenses that we associate to the conference and so on. So still the numbers are, are crude, but from uh, what we had uh, estimated and in, in review, it, it is positive. Um, 
our supporters, I have to say it here, and, and I know that it's been said, our supporters have been extremely helpful in reaching and going beyond our fundraising estimates for this conference. We have to be very grateful for that. Uh, uh, this is uh, one of the of the few, I would say, conferences where the, the treasurer can go to sleep the next day, very happy that and already confident that everything uh, is going to be covered and um, we're we're in the in the in the black since the since before the even the conference started. Um, then uh, the income from, as I said, from the conference registration has not been included, but it's estimated, as I said, around thirty-three thousand. Um, the cost, the expenses um, are not there yet, but um, we're working with an estimation of uh, forty-two thousand, which with the fundraising, it's a uh, it's a uh, completely covered. And that's, uh, again, that's a good situation to have. Next one. Um, so how's the money? Um, the, this is a, a, a graph of the total bank account balance per year. Um, we now have uh, funds in Talbot Europe for the projects that we have been working on. And that is, uh, that has grown from, uh, from almost 200 to, to more than 250,000. Um, this, this means uh, that uh, we're, we're okay in, the, in terms of, um, you know, some of the conferences, depending on where they are and so on, might be more cost, might have more cost. And um, so we, we plan for that. Uh, this might be one of the, of the uh, fat cows conferences. Uh, I don't mean to insult the cows, but one of the conferences that we get the very good uh, uh, revenue from, um, there might be others depending on where they're not, and that's how we work, and that's how it has been compensated throughout the years. But in, in terms of uh, the um, this conference in particular, um, I'm, I'm glad to see that its, um, it's uh, participation has grown. Um, we have charged for this time as different from the last year, we have charged for the expenses on the platform and so on. And still we got a very good participation uh, thanks to the great support of our, our, our uh, uh, um, supporters and, and, and sponsors. And of course, of uh, each one and every one of you that uh, help us come stay in this situation. Um, uh -huh. Then the last uh, thing I want to mention is uh, Talbot Europe. Uh, the balance in Talbot Europe also is um, currently um, high. Uh, what happened here was that we were not having able to spend the money that we thought we were going to spend uh, for the, in the last uh, couple of years uh, because of the, of the COVID-19. Um, we have just started to get people traveling again and part of the, of the support that we get on the projects in Talbot Europe is for this. So hopefully we're going to be able to support our colleagues in the in the projects that are going on, and starting to get um, in-person meetings. Um, I want to uh, thank here. Uh, want to give thanks here to Walter, to Walter adding to Lee, Tina Lu, uh, and these three who have been uh, managing and helping with uh, the European uh, tabway. Um, and then. Uh, Next one. I think that's that it. it. Yep. Any questions? Yep. I'll be glad to provide details. I try not to get into much of the details here, but uh, and still we have not all the, the whole picture for the year. But soon enough, these expenses are going to come in and round up the what I expect is going to be a, a, a great year for us. Yes. Thank you. Thank you to everyone who's been part of making that so. And everyone that's here. Um, thanks, William. So that brings us uh, to the next slide, which uh, happens every year, of course, and that some people uh, rotate out and it's time for new people. And we have these positions open. Uh, so we're looking for nominations for treasurer. Um, William and Stan, and I'm not sure who all of us can tell you all kinds of uh, uh, details about that position in, uh, in Tadwig, if you'd like to learn more. Um, the committees that need, what did you say, James? They're not, they're conveners, yes, co-conveners. Um, infrastructure, uh, it needs someone, and that's uh, the slide you heard that was about uh, Tim and the support that GBIF provides um, and 
others to support tadwig.org and GitHub and linking them together, for example, uh, the technical architecture group, the fundraising and partnerships, and the time and place. So you can nominate yourself if you're so interested, and you can get more information here on the slide. You can go to that and find out how that works. Um, you can certainly talk to any of us. We'll be happy to chat with you about it. And you can certainly knock on somebody's door and say, hey, I think you'd be good at this. A lot of times people are, one, they're waiting to be asked, and two, they're not always aware of how they're perceived. They don't recognize necessarily their own value or their, uh, that they could take on that role. And it's a, it can be a surprise to them when someone comes to them and, and sort of gives them that gift. So don't hesitate if you think there's someone you think would be good and just um, could use encouragement to give it a shot. Um, representatives around the world and the two spots that are open uh, coming up are the regional representative for Latin America. Uh, Paula Zermoglio is here, if, if she's still here, she can be happy to chat with you about that. And the regional representative for, for Oceania, which is currently Shelley James uh, down from Perth in Australia. Any questions? We'd love to hear them. Um, looking to the future, Ellie, was this you? This is me, yeah. Yay. <laughs> Um, hi everyone. Um, so just to before I look to the future, just to continue on with the um, uh, the elections and the executive. Can you go back to the next slide, Deb? Because I have their pictures. <laughs> um, so thank you to the outgoing members of the executive. I won't read out all of their names. Uh, Deb has already um, particularly thanked Connie Ronaldo, who is, who is shown there, um, second, second image, who's retired now um, and has uh, decided that she needs to step back from the fundraising and partnerships. Um, so we, we, we won't be seeing her uh, nearly as much as we have been. So we very much thank uh, Connie for all the years of uh, effort and enthusiasm that she's put into Tadwig as well as BHL, of course. Uh, some of the people who are shown here uh, may well, may renominate for positions, um, that is possible. So the terms initially are for two years, but uh, it is possible to renominate for positions. So we hope that, um, in fact, many of the people in the list down there will not be strangers to the Tadwig executive and um, uh, may continue. But that doesn't mean to say that you shouldn't put your hand up um, because we would really love one of the, one of the, the visions uh, vision challenges for the future is how to how to continue to encourage people to uh, make that take that extra step and join the executive or join one of the functional subcommittees, because we're all volunteers. None of us are doing this really as part of our job. We're doing it in addition to our job, and so uh, that's a that's an extra uh, thing to take on. Plus the challenge of late night meetings or early morning meetings, meetings that are outside your comfort time zone, um, a very a, a, a reality of having a, a global community, um, but it's really very rewarding as someone who's speaking to you from Australia um, to, to be able to still interact with the global community, even if it does have to be at midnight. So in the future, over the next couple of years, one of the things we're going to start taking on as an executive is some strategic planning work. Uh, the Outreach and Communications Committee have started some really excellent work this year. And we want to uh, look to the future and um, really have a clearer, a clearer vision of where we're going. We think that the, uh, the Tadwig standards are so well embedded into the community now that we really need to know, we need to have some governance around uh, where we're going and what we're doing with those. So that will be a, a, um, uh, a process that we hope that other people will participate in as well. We're also going to look at being res more responsive to the community. The process, we know that the process to ratify standards can be very slow. Uh, so ensuring, James already mentioned, that ensuring that the TAG and the executive are functioning really effectively to be responsive to proposals is going to be one of the things that we'll look at. And also making them, uh, as James mentioned, making the process clearer. Uh, it's sometimes difficult to know exactly how the process is going to work. Uh, even people who've been working with the process for a very long time can find it um, sometimes a little bit, um, a bit stochastic, a bit stop start um, and wonder how, how things could actually get through more quickly. 
So we'll also support the process that's uh, underway uh, with GBIF doing, uh, having a look at the Darwin Core data model to better describe relationships between things. Uh, GBIF have um, acknowledged and recognised that Darwin Core uh, is, is a very flat structure and is not necessarily meeting the needs of all of the, all of the, the advanced data, the extended data model, uh, the, sorry, the um, digital extended specimen or the digital extended occurrence or the uh, digitally extensible specimen. Um, take your pick of those, uh, the interpretation of those acronyms. Uh, and so uh, th those are really bringing up issues around creating relationships and that the Darwin Core Standard will need to look at. And we'll hear, hear more about that from Tim and John in the, in the near future. We've also got a lot of collaborations going. The Alliance for Biodiversity, RDA, GBIF, the Atlas of Living Australia, IDIGBio, Spinach, Disco, Synthesis Plus, BHL, Bicycle, I didn't put in there. There's a lot of collaborative work going on and various members of uh, TADWIG reach across uh, different activities. And so trying to keep a, keep a, a pulse on what every, what it, what's going on in all of the different places is, um, is difficult, but that's why it's so great to have such a globally uh, distributed community to work with. Uh, Beacon is another one that I missed out there, and I'm sure that there's other partnerships that we're um, uh, other partnerships and activities that I haven't mentioned. So that's what we're we're looking to for the future. That's uh, in the we'll, we'll attempt at least to start that work next year. I can't I can't imagine that any of that work is going to be completely finished next year because uh, it's uh, a long term vision into the future. We can always keep on improving and that's what we will are keen to try to do. Thanks, Deb. Thank you. Uh, so now we've gotten to the last bits of the meeting, the exciting parts of finding out more about next year and giving lots of thanks so we can get to the dancing part. So is anyone from Pensoft or Bicycle here? I wasn't sure if Ludo is late where so the drum roll is Tadwig 2022 in Bulgaria. So we're excited to partner. Uh, They're very receptive. Our partnership with uh, Pensoft through the bicycle project uh, makes it a natural fit. Um, is anyone here from the project? from Pensoft or Bicycle. It's all, like I said, it's late in Bulgaria. Uh, so they shared with us these slides. Uh, we would be in Sofia and they give us some ideas of what we can expect to see there. Y'all see the hot springs line? It made me think of Costa Rica. Um, so we look forward to this partnership with them. Um, they shared with us that the National Museum of Natural History, the Bulgarian Academy of Sciences would also like to be a partner and local host uh, in this effort. So we're excited uh, to have that support and that partnership. And in, this includes the Institute for Biodiversity and the Ecosystem Research, IBER as well. So we look forward to uh, a meeting with them in Sofia, and it will also be in October. Um, we are we don't have the dates yet, uh, but we have to confirm with the GBIF uh, when they want to hold their governing board so we don't overlap or conflict. And um, there's a potential other meetings we have to make sure we don't clash. That's it. Now we give thanks, and there's so many. Um, all of you, right? The village organizing Tadwig 2021. So please take a moment to say thank you, however you want in the chat or with an emoji or something. But, uh, you know, thank you to the people who made this possible, whether that's the local organizers, University of Florida, um, Pamela Soltis from IDIG Bio and the director of the University of Florida Biodiversity Institute, uh, making the whole thing possible by saying yes in the first place 
way back when James asked them about it in 2018 in New Zealand. Um, the program committee who put up their hands and said, yes, we will help. We will envision what Tadwig 2021 is going to look like, uh, serve on uh, putting together events, putting together the program, reviewing the abstracts, uh, taking on the social events, um, learning how to get into the platform and post and notes announcements and all the other things that we were all learning to do on the fly. Uh, and the steering committee overseeing uh, the process and taking the time to make sure we um, did the best job we could to move to uh, a virtual platform. So to all the session organizers, everybody who moderated, uh, who gave a talk, who presented a poster, uh, without you, we don't have content to offer people and bring them the latest of what's happening or what is needful. Uh, and to the people who helped make that possible. And of course, to the participants for bringing your expertise and, and your insights. Uh, we can't thank you enough. So again, I encourage you to go and learn more about who these people are. And you've got to meet many of them. Uh, if you met BJ through the bio blitz, you're going to meet Dimitri if you haven't already, uh, either through a session that he was uh, co-chairing or through the upcoming radio uh, DJ Demi with Radio Tadwick. Um, Kim, Chandra, Luis, Shelley, Lucia, Gail, Tina, Maxim, Visitary, Klaus, everyone playing um, a really critical role in, in bringing you what you see here. Um, so a big thanks to them. And as William so eloquently pointed out uh, where we are, we have uh, these organizations to thank. And I hope we, we think about what that means in both directions from, from GBIF to the World Wildlife Fund, the Atlas of Living Australia, DISCO, Pensoft, Picturei, the University of Florida, the, the Research and the Biodiversity Institute, the Florida Museum, IDIG Bio, Natural Solutions, and BHL all make it possible for us to offer um, what you've experienced this year and make it possible for many people to join us that otherwise uh, would likely not be able to. And in addition, we get the opportunity to uh, contribute to their missions. So an example would be some of you saw in the job boards um, there's a fellowship that the World Wildlife Fund offers for conservation, uh, the Russell Train uh, fellowships. That's just one example uh, of the way in which we sort of amplify each other's needs and find out where we, we overlap. So it's a, it's a two way street. And now we come to the next part. Uh, not the last part until we get to here. So we want to thank uh, Dimitri Brosens for taking on Radio Tadwig, and we're looking forward to that. So if you haven't done so yet, if somebody will post the link, uh, there's a Google form that you can fill out, make a, a request. And please know if you join us uh, after this session for this, uh, we'll be doing a little music, and then we'll have a little chat, and then some music, and then we'll chat. So it's not just dancing, but it's also a chance to continue conversations. And with that, um, anybody else want to add a final thought? Did I leave anything out? I wanted to also add that inside the platform, you'll find a link uh, to the session. It will take you out of the platform. It will be in the Tadwig Zoom. And that way, um, we'll be in our own realm and not inside the platform because we won't have Avery and Katie Kevin and Lauren and Sienna to rescue us if anything happens. So <laughs> we'll be in Zoom. Thank you very much. Um, and with that, from all of us, uh, thank you. That's a wrap. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Deb. We really appreciate you guys. Um, I wanted to let you know that I will be posting the recordings 